What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Malfo Lore Guide. This week, we're talking about Titania of the Neverborn. So if you're new here, spoiler alert for all of Titania's stories, and you'll find a list of the stories covered in the description below. And if you like Malfo, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. And with that, let's get going on Titania. In ancient times, Titania ruled over the fey creatures of Malifo. Her rule was long until the rise of several godlike beings known as the Tyrants challenged her power. However, she defeated the Tyrants, banishing each of them away. But then her own people, who sensed that her power was too strong, turned against her. Now that she has returned from her imprisonment, Titania is seeking to gain some of her power back and unite the native creatures of Malifo under her rule in order to once again defeat the Tyrants and rid their realm of all of the human invaders. When Von Schill hears rumors of a tyrant-killing weapon hidden in the ruins of Nythera, he leads an expedition of Freekormen there to find it. Lilith, and later Rasputina, attack Von Schill, fearing that he will accidentally release Titania the Autumn Queen. However, despite their best efforts, Nythera is opened, and Titania is released from her cage. Titania emerges from Nythera, where she had been imprisoned for centuries. As she and her Autumn Knights emerge and get their bearings, the snowy tundra surrounding them transforms into a verdant forest. Despite having no eyes, Titania senses her surroundings and reaches out to get a feel for the world around her. She learns that the land has changed quite a bit in her absence and senses that her followers, the Fae, only now exist in scattered remnants. She also senses the human vermin who now infest the city and picks up on the neverborn inhabitants of the world who she feels share a kinship with her own people. Of particular interest to her is one of these neverborn who has infiltrated the people of the city and seems to hold significant power there. She decides to go visit him and creates a massive storm to cover her approach as she makes her way to the city. Lucius is in his office, burning an expensive Cuban cigar, when he sees the storm approaching outside. He looks out the window and sees a figure peering back at him, and then hears a voice in his head, asking him why he pretends to be one of the human vermin. Lucius asks who is speaking to him, and she responds that she is Titania the Autumn Queen, which Lucius doesn't believe, responding that Titania is only a myth. Titania answers that legend and myth were once true, and goes on to explain that she wants Lucius to gather the captains of his people so that she may announce her return, and propose that they cooperate to defeat the tyrants. Lucius realizes that she is who she says she is, and agrees to pass the word along, but points out that he does not speak for the Neverborn, and that they may not answer her call, though both of them know that this will not be the case. Titania leaves, and brings her followers to her old court, where her throne sits. She finds the area barren, and soon senses the approach of many Neverborn. Aislin, her second-in-command, tells her that the Neverborn will bow before her, or they will be forced to, and Titania responds that the Neverborn are proud and at the height of their power, and their leaders may be slow to accept her rule, but that they are in no position to make war yet. Hours later, and Lilith approaches with a large contingent of Nephilim guards. She looks at Titania and tells her that she didn't know queens could be dressed in rags like beggars. Titania ignores her insolence and welcomes her to the court, asking the woman for her name. When Lilith declines to respond, Aislinn yells back at her and the two almost come to blows before Titania yells out for them to stop and everyone senses the power in her voice as it echoes around the court. Just then, Pandora approaches, expressing her pleasure that Titania does not want there to be any fighting. She introduces herself and Lilith and apologizes for Lilith's bad attitude. Lilith tries to whisper privately to Pandora that if this woman is who she says she is, then she is very dangerous, so much so that her own people turned against her and imprisoned her. Titania, who overheard the whole conversation, responds that her people did in fact imprison her, but that they did not understand her true intentions. And she goes on to explain that because of their treachery, she was unable to completely defeat the tyrants last time, but that with the combined power of the Neverborn, she expects to be able to this time. Lilith sarcastically remarks that she must expect them to bow to her, and Titania responds that she does not expect any fealty, merely an alliance between their two forces. Lilith refuses, explaining that Titania cannot be trusted given her past, and Titania turns to Pandora who tells her that she likes her plan to defeat the tyrants, and that she believes she is in fact the Queen of the Fae, but that she believes that Titania poses a more significant threat to her people than the tyrants do. This takes Titania by surprise, and Lilith tells her she is done listening, and that Titania is not welcome here, and she turns to leave, bringing her followers with her. After they are all gone, Titania tells Pandora that she hopes the two of them can be friends one day, and Pandora responds one thing at a time, and also leaves. Titania considers that the meeting didn't go as well as she had hoped, but that it could have gone far worse, as at least the Neverborn are not openly hostile towards her. And then she senses a group of the Neverborn are still lingering outside of her court, with hopes that she will represent their salvation from the tyrants. She invites them to come in, and they each kneel and pledge themselves to her. 
Nakima comes to Titania's court and grudgingly pays her respects. Titania asks her why she has come, and Nakima reminds her of the deal that they had made, in which Nakima promised her her loyalty and the loyalty of her followers in exchange for Titania's support overthrowing Lilith. Titania responds that she remembers, but that it is too early to make their move, and Nakima tells her that the time is now, as Lilith plans to move against her soon, and she reminds Titania that without her, she will not have the support of any of the Nephilim. Titania agrees, but emphasizes their need to keep their alliance a secret from their enemies. Nakima flies away, and Aslan approaches Titania and asks her why she puts up with the disrespect from Nakima. Titania responds that Nakima is useful to her. Later, after Nakima successfully launches a surprise attack against Lilith's followers, and the battle is raging, Titania stands in the forest outside the battle, continuing her magic spell, which will hide the future from anyone who is trying to see it. As she does so, Zoraida approaches the battlefield and catches sight of Titania, recognizing what she is doing. Titania smiles at her and walks into the forest. Not long after escaping her prison, Titania became aware of one of the humans who seemed to have made his home inside of her domain. On several occasions, she sent her fay to get rid of the man, but he proved a match for them and refused to leave. Finally, after two years of his presence, Titania sends a messenger to request an audience with the man, and he agrees to meet with her, following her messenger, who leads him to her court. Titania watches him approach, and the two of them are alone. She asks him to pay tribute to her throne, and he does so to her satisfaction. She then asks him why he has come to her forest, if not to bow before her, and Marcus responds that he bows to only one law. At that, Titania charges forward and attacks the man. Marcus counters with his magic, trying to impose his will on her, and Titania feels her animal instincts resurge, and a rush of adrenaline hit her, as Marcus's will begins to overpower her. Suddenly, Marcus senses a presence in the forest, as Aislinn is about to attack, but Titania senses it as well, and shrieks at her to stay away. But the distraction is enough to turn the tide, and Titania gets the upper hand on Marcus, who kneels before her, waiting to be executed. After a long pause, Titania turns away from him, and returns to her throne. As she sits casually, she asks Marcus if he came to her forest to acquire knowledge, and Marcus explains that he wants to expand his power to reshape flesh and bone. Titania asks him if he will use this power to fight the tyrants, and he responds that he will, among other things. Titania summons a golden leaf from her throne and etches a magical rune on it, which she then hands to Marcus, and tells him that it will reveal the power to him if he is worthy. He asks what she wants in return, and she tells him that she wants a pact that each of them will keep to themselves and leave the other in peace. Marcus agrees and walks away. After the battle, Titania sits on her throne, considering how close she came to being defeated had Aislinn not interfered in their fight. As her court returns from their places of hiding, where she had ordered them to stay during their showdown, Aislinn approaches her and Titania scolds the woman for interfering, and tells the woman that had she followed through on her attack, she does not think that Marcus would have been taken by surprise. Aislinn apologizes for not following her orders, and Titania considers whether the fight was so close due to her weakened state from being in prison for so long, or if Marcus was simply more powerful than his kin. And then another fay approaches the throne to tell Titania that Nakima and the Nephilim are approaching. Aislinn sneers and says at least the human was worthy of their respect. Titania senses invaders in her domain and sends her fey and Nephilim followers to stop them. After two small skirmishes, the Victorias and their mercenary party get closer to Titania's court until an all-out battle ensues. The forces seem evenly matched, with the Vix and the other mercenaries holding their line, until one of the Victorias catches sight of Titania behind the front line and suddenly breaks ranks to pursue her. Her twin sister follows her hesitantly as she shouts an order back to one of the swordswomen to perform a ritual. Several of the Ronins start speaking a spell, and suddenly Killjoy bursts out of one of their bodies. He starts cutting down the fake creatures in a violent rage as the two forces stop fighting with each other to keep their distance from the monster. Meanwhile, the Victorias engage Titania, who uses her flight to stay just out of their reach as she observes their fighting style, and notices that one of the Victorias seems to be fighting like a rabid animal, ignoring all other danger, while trying to get a hold of the Fae Queen. Titania knows that they will wear down and make a mistake eventually, allowing her to capitalize and strike them down. As Killjoy approaches them, cutting down more Fae creatures, he suddenly stops, with a look of recognition on his face, and bows before Titania, referring to her as his queen. Titania orders him to rise and prove his loyalty to her, and the Victorias are surprised as Killjoy suddenly charges at them. His chain wraps around the Masamune and disarms Victoria, throwing the magical blade into the forest. She is overcome with a desire to reacquire her weapon, and doesn't notice as Killjoy almost strikes her down, her twin sister pushing her out of the way just in time. She continues to try to go after the blade, but the other Victoria drags her away, shouting orders to their people to retreat, and Titania watches on with a smile 
smile on her face as they evacuate the area. After the battle, Titania stands over Killjoy and tells him that she has not seen his kind in many years. The assembled Fae and Nephilim expect Titania to execute Killjoy for killing so many of her people during the battle, but Killjoy tells her that he had been a prisoner for a long time and pledges himself to her. She accepts and he joins the ranks of her followers. She turns to Aislinn, who shows her the dead body of one of the Fae, who is holding a weapon of one of the invaders. Aislinn explains that anyone who takes up the blade is overcome with a bloodlust towards Titania. Titania looks down at the sword and recognizes it as the prison that is holding the tyrant Shezul. She summons some vines that grab hold of the blade and pull it into the ground, and then a tree sprouts next to her throne that contains the blade, putting it on display for all to see. Aislinn asks Titania if it's a good idea to keep such a dangerous object so close to her, and Titania responds that she was not afraid of the tyrants at the height of their power, and she is certainly not afraid of them now. As the war between Titania and the tyrants waged, Titania began experimenting with creating new life. Her first success was a hive mind known as Cadmus that infested other creatures and allowed Titania to have eyes and ears all around the world. She ordered Cadmus not to infest any fae, but as its intelligence grew, it could not resist the temptation to acquire more knowledge, and it went against Titania's wishes. When she found out, she sealed Cadmus away, forcing it into a deep sleep that broke its connection with all of its mites. The hive mind stayed hibernating until recently, when it was unearthed by the explorers society. So that's it for Titania the Autumn Queen. It's really interesting to see how many characters from Malifaux are so afraid of Titania, but I guess that's what happens when you defeat all of the gods and become a legend. I wonder if we'll start to see some unlikely allies start teaming up to go against Titania in the future, especially any of the characters who have a connection to any of the tyrants, as they're the ones that are most afraid of Titania. Maybe we'll get Rasputina and Shenlong to team up to go after Titania. That'd be pretty dope. But anyway, drop a comment below and let me know who you'd like to see me do a video on next. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel to keep up with the next episodes, and consider sharing this video with someone who you think might be into it. And thanks for watching.